Hello, hello. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. I interview the top commercial real estate investors and industry experts so you can learn from their experiences. So if you're an investor, a high W-2 earner or real estate or tech sales professional that wants to invest in real estate without having to manage properties or leave your day job, then this podcast is for you. Or if you're already investing in real estate, but you're doing it part-time and you wanna become a full-time multifamily or full-time commercial real estate investor, this podcast is for you too. You're gonna learn a ton. You will learn from real life multifamily investors and other professionals in the industry. They're gonna share their blueprints for success and I'm super excited that you're here. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello. This is Abel Pacheco, your host for the Five Talents Podcast. We are excited today, again, as always, to bring you another amazing guest, Mr. Mauricio Ramos. Mauricio, how's it going, brother? Hey, Abel, doing great. Living the dream, man. Uh, super excited to be here, finally. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited that you're on as well. And um, I know our guest and audience is going to have a few things to learn they're going to be inspired, moved, motivated, and get some tactical direction on what to do next in their own investing, uh, their own investing journey. So I'm excited to have you. And if you don't know Mr. Mauricio Ramos, he is one of those individuals that you absolutely need, need to get in his world. He is a full-time real estate investor. He's an accredited investor too. He's got a ton of experience um, really from uh, his life, his professional world as a project manager. He, he worked with a lot of large general contractors in Texas uh, and converted a lot of that experience into what he does now for himself. Uh, he's the founder and managing member of Dem Medici Group. They're, they're invested in about, about a thousand doors, a thousand doors, say that one more time, uh, in Texas. And the, you know, Marius is on fire, him and his partner. I know Adrian, we're, we're partners to get on the other opportunity, but they've been acquiring properties uh, and also with the vertically managed uh, company, 210 Property Management. So I'm going to kick it over to them because, uh, or to, sorry, to Mauricio, because we're going to break into uh, just a really great conversation. Mauricio, in your own words, tell us who you are and what you do, and we'll start a great conversation here. Absolutely. Thanks, Abel. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the intro. So my name is Mauricio Ramos. I'm 35 years old. I live in San Antonio. Um, I'm originally from Yucatan in Mexico. Grew up grew up in Matamoros. I came to the U.S. for college, civil engineer, uh, and worked 10 years in the construction industry, and been um, been doing real estate. I started doing real estate about seven years into the construction uh, background. And been doing real estate now for about six and being able to quit my job. I quit my job in 2018 and been doing real estate full time since and not looking back. Yeah, baby. I love it. I love it. Get after it. A uh, thousand doors is no joke. So passive investing and as a general partner and a principal and you've gone full cycle on some properties already and now you're acquiring bigger and better opportunities uh, how many how many properties are you all invested in? You know, total as your portfolio. As my portfolio, we're looking probably around four, five that we have, and four others, so nine total. Yeah, I love it. Well, congratulations, uh, and what an amazing feat, uh, and also an immigrant to the country. Uh, when did you move to the U.S. for college in two thousand three? Man, so okay, so you've been here for a few amount of years, but yeah. there's always extra hurdles. There's always extra obstacles than than somebody from the country. But uh, hearing individuals that have been on our podcast, and you're one of them, just to to move from another country to do it is always so inspiring. Just off the bat, because of those extra challenges, you know, as it as as it as if it wasn't hard enough to do it already, you have that extra <laughs> extra challenge, but man, proven time and time again, if you set your mind to something, then you can absolutely go do it. So uh, I love it, man. So, so tell me, how did, how did it even come about that you started in the real estate career? Because you were doing real estate W-2 before you were investing. How did that even happen? 
Yeah, so I was working in the construction industry as a project manager. Um, when I moved to San Antonio, when I was working in the Valley first, in the Rio Grande Valley, um, I was just doing, I, I had no idea what real estate, you know, how it worked and the investment side of it. When I moved to San Antonio and start work, started working for a construction company here, um, I had an intern and my intern introduced me to real estate and who is now this intern is now my business partner is Adrian. So nice. for those, for those who know him, so he was, I met him as my intern first. So he had, he, he was a few years already into real estate. So he introduced me to it. And that's when I started, uh, you know, learning about rich dad, poor dad, cash flow quadrant, all those books. And, you know, started going to the, to the San Antonio Ria and just started educating myself learning in that's when I found uh, first I found single family like the buy and hold technique and I was like okay this is this is something I can work with towards you know getting rid of of my w2 job and then I found multifamily within you know like a couple of years I found multifamily and I said okay this is it with I'm a civil engineer so with my engineering mind, you know, it, it's a lot more number based versus the single family, which is like the comms and all that. There's a lot of, a lot of feel about, about single family versus multifamily is very number hard based. So when I found it and understood it, it's like, this is it. I didn't look back to single family and started educating myself now into multifamily and, you know, start bought my 10 unit my first apartment uh, purchase was a 10 unit apartment community in Pleasanton, Texas, uh, then bought a 16, then bought a 32, nine, seven, 88, and just keep, keeps going. Yeah, baby. I love it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, that, that don't quite, they don't understand what you just said. So let me, let me say at least one or two other nuggets on here. What I, Adrian, uh, what Mauricio said uh, for single family, the feel uh, versus the numbers value generation for uh, multifamily, it's almost like a clear cut valuation of the property where, uh, as he knows, in single family, uh, if you you know, do a, uh, if you renovate a house and like a style or, a, uh, you over, I don't know, renovate a single property on an, in a neighborhood down the street, you may think it's valued at one price. And then the market tells you it's valued at a different one. And that may be just your offers. Right. But there's something about multifamily. When you said the engineering mind that you had, uh, it's very easy to determine the value because it's based off net operating income. Your total income minus all your expenses equals your NOI. There's debt service coverage ratio, but all that stuff is is essentially where your value comes from. So that clicked with you, right, Mauricio? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it was black and white. It's simple math. I mean, I think in, in numbers and, and it's easy, easily, you can put it on a spreadsheet and I can you know, I can, I can look at spreadsheets all day and it's okay. I get it. I understand it. And let's, let's, let's put it to work. And I basically took the little knowledge I had at the time in, in single family and put it on multifamily and it just, it, it worked really well. Yeah. Cause you, you'd done a couple single family houses anyways, you were already investing in it kind of that way. Right. I did. And we, we were wholesaling a few, a few single families when I started with Adrian. Um, and we, I was able to wholesale like three houses. Uh, actually that one of those houses, uh, one of those wholesales left me with $15,000 wholesale fee, which I used to close on my first 10 unit apartment community, which was like $12,000 down plus closing costs, 0% interest in like a thousand bucks a month, like super good terms. Yeah. And, and I put that into, into that and then wholesale some apartments, made some good fees, five and six figures, and then was able to use some of that money, put it into that apartment community, go full cycle, double my money, and then put it into, into bigger, better things. <laughs> oh, man. So cre creative financing was another term for those listeners. Google that. And you, usually you find them in single family 
uh, single family deals, more often creative financing, owner carry, things like that, 0% interest. You know, the seller is happy to turn something over. Mauricio and his team, they do a lot of work and you know everybody's kind of winning, but you don't really see them a lot in the multifamily space. And then I heard wholesale, five and six, six figure wholesales. Holy yes, moly. So how, uh, this is a good one for people that always say, well, how do I get started? I don't have 200 grand or 300 grand. I don't have $50,000. What the heck do I do? You were able to successfully move from single family, single family wholesale, and then multifamily wholesale, and then multifamily deals. So, talk a little bit about how did that happen? For sure. So, so I was doing, I was sending postcards to to single family homes. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, we were door knocking at the time. So Adrian was getting lists, and we were door knocking. And when I was going to like going to these houses, you would drive through these neighborhoods and, you know, I would write down lists or addresses of, of uh, distressed houses. So basically I took that, that technique of sending postcards to these places, but now to multifamily properties and sending these postcards and, you know, the, the phone was ringing left and right. So I was submitting offers with the knowledge that I had about uh, multifamily and, uh, was able to, to, you know, find a good deal and then turn it around and sell it as a good deal as well. So it was a good deal for the seller. It was a good deal for me. It was a good deal for the buyer Yeah. and, and make a good profit and then take that profit and invest it back into, uh, either another property or somebody else's property as a passive investor. And, uh, it's it just, it, it's very good way to make big bucks. A single family takes time, you know, typically a single family, you might be able to close in 30 days, maybe less. Um, a multifamily wholesale deal will take you anywhere from 30 to maybe 90 or 120 days, but it very profitable. So it's worth it. Yeah. I love it. How many of those did y'all do those bigger deals, the uh, um, wholesale we, bigger deals? Yeah. We've done probably good five or six big <laughs> deals. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really cool, man. It's, it's, it's inspiring uh, for some people that say, oh, multifamily gets traded at the brokers only. That's, you know, true. It's also true that every once in a while you can find a seller direct and <laughs> get a deal done the way you guys did. That's also Absolutely. true. Yeah. Oh, and man. more specifically, small multi, which is easier mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, the typical 150 door complex. But yeah, it's totally, totally doable. And those were some of the deals you did the first few opportunities, right? Like you also did some, you didn't wholesale all of them. You kind of cherry picked the best ones. Yeah, exactly. So that, that 10 unit that I was talking about, I submitted a, uh, a three offer letter, which had a, which had a cash option at second option with some seller finance terms, some interest. And then a third option, of course, the, the price is increasing from the first to the second and then from the second to the third. Mm -hmm. And then the third had 0% interest. So sure enough, buyer, uh, the seller went with a 0% interest. He's like, I'll take a higher price and uh, you'll just pay me over time. Yep. That's all he wanted. He wanted to retire and little did he know, I, I, he got paid off within 18 months. Man, nice, nice work, dude. So you guys not only did the creative part, you didn't really need capital. The capital was for renovation, not for the down payment. And that's exactly. what you did. You forced the appreciation up, the interior units, exterior, all that good stuff. Everything, the whole nine yards, that that place was a disaster, honestly. I mean, <laughs> with, knowing what I know, I, I'm not sure if yeah. I would buy it again <laughs> now. Oh, I love it. But back then I did it. Yeah. And, and I'm, sure it, uh, I'm sure you learned a ton, man. Yeah. And learned a lot, maybe what you don't want to do either. Either way, you're learning from it and you're, I'm sure, progressing your cash, progressing your net worth, progressing your experience. And I love all of it. So uh, when when did you come into this mindset of, of really real estate in the first place and then real estate as a financial kind of area for you to you know, build wealth in? I know you said Adrian was your intern and he kind of maybe sparked that idea, but when you were younger, did you like want to do real estate? Is that why you went into W2 or how, how did that even happen? Great question. No. And, and honestly, like my, my years in the construction industry, I didn't see them as, as real estate uh, experience, which now definitely they worked a lot, but I didn't yeah. see them that way. I was in a different 
see it in the same kind of development side, but I didn't see it that way. So it really started um, about probably about 10 years from now um, after I was working. I, I thought I was going to work the rest of my life. Right. And then there was a point where through some, some friends and acquaintances, I started traveling. I quit my job not knowing that I was going to go into real estate. And I went traveling uh, for six months. I went to Hira, Mexico, a few places in the U.S. And I really fell in love with, with traveling. I've been to 26 countries now. But at that time, I was like, all right, there has to be a way in which you can continue traveling without having to just like go back to work all year, save two months, uh, save money and then go to go to vacation for two weeks and then kind of do it all over again, right? There has to be some other way, but that didn't know how. And then came back, went back to the construction industry, went back to work. And that I, you know, my mind was already thinking about what, what was that one thing that I, that I needed to find to be able to do that. And when I found, you know, real estate and buy and hold, I was like, this is it. This is how I can get out eventually out of my job and continue traveling and continue getting paid, right? Then I found, um, and at, at the same time, when I was working in the construction industry, uh, you know, I had, I had very good teachers, uh, other project managers or other superintendents, but, you know, they were in their, in their, you know, older years, probably 60s, in their late 50s or 60s, and they were still working. They had been working mm. in, in construction since they were like 20. Yeah. And I mean, they had nowhere near to be retired. And then whenever they would be retired, you know, they're, they're, they're tired. You know, they, there was no energy to really go travel or go do all those things that you wanted to do all this time because you, and you didn't because you were working. Right. So it's like, I don't, I don't want to get to that age in, in, in not do what I want to do and not be able to spend time with my family um, I want to, I want to be able to enjoy the world while I'm, you know, young and on my terms. Right. So when I found real estate and I started meeting other people and I started realizing the freedom, financial freedom and time freedom that it can give you, if you do it right, I, I, I said, this is it. This is how I'm going I'm to do it. And then I just put a lot of work into it, educated myself, took action like Uncle G says, you know, 10x in in that I was able to quit my job in 2018, and you know I'm still I'm still busy, but doing something I really really like, and and it it's on my terms, you know. I have the time, I have the freedom uh, to you know go. I, I was recently in uh, Brazil for a few weeks, and you know, no no problem. I love it. Well. It's that, uh, that freedom, that drive, that motivation, you know, that, uh, you know, we all want to have a piece of it, if not traveling for the, you know, for the rest of our lives. I, I'd, I'd enjoy a couple of weeks out of the year, that's for sure, and have the ability, the, the means to go do it and the time, the flexibility to take it, um, you know, is, is tremendous. It's, it's something that a lot of us don't have the opportunity to do. And then on the flip side, um, building something for yourself as opposed to building something for someone else is Absolutely. also a different motivation because uh, I'm sure everybody, you know, on somebody watching, probably a good majority of us can relate. You've put your time, effort, and energy into your business, your organization, your team, uh, your company. It, at one time or another where you've put more than what you've allotted more than what your dollar's worth because you really were passionate about helping but it's different when you know that any day if i leave the company i'm not building anything that lasted it was my paycheck and the paycheck stops but building your own having that same passion energy motivation inspiration for something that is is going to benefit you in the long term it's very different very different That's mindset 100 percent, 100 percent correct man yeah. Well, I love it. Thanks for sharing that, you know, the insight and uh, just giving us a little bit of, you know, this, uh, your path, because a lot of people always ask, well, how, how in the hell do I do that? How do I, go, how do I go from here to there? And that this is one way there is no, 
uh, on, there's not only one way, there's many multiple ways. And, it, yeah. and Marisa just shared his. So thank you very much. So what the heck are you doing today, man? You, you've gotten a bunch of properties. Uh, you know, I'm happy to say we're partnered together on a, yeah. an 88 unit property over in McAllen, Texas. So I was super pumped when uh, you asked me if I could, it, you know, be a part of the team. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm in because we there's opportunities where we met each other and we were yeah. networking it, you know, but anyways, ha happy to have you know, you as a partner, but what, what, what else are you working on, man? What's going on? Yeah. So fast forward to, to, to now we, um, me and my business partner, Adrian, uh, we created 210 management, which is basically the product of, you know, his entity and my entity. And now we're working together as, as partners. Um, uh, and we're also vertically integrated. So we manage the properties, that we own uh, right now, we own 137 units that we, you know, own and operate, and we're invested in, like we said, you know, hundreds of other units. But um, we're always looking for more. We're 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 focusing on multifamily. We're we're going bigger. We we bought a 16 unit together. That was our first indication. Then we bought a 32, 88. Um, there's there's a few a few other properties that we're looking at right now, um, you know. For now, staying within the seventy five to like one hundred and fifty door mark. Uh, as we continue to grow, we're growing the our our team. We have a full time property manager now. Uh, we have a, uh, a couple of leasing agents. We have a maintenance guy. We have a couple of capex crews uh, doing work at the property. So. Been 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 uh, been growing the team, and it feels good to be able to to, you know, to provide work for other people, provide housing for other people. Um, we're also developing here in San Antonio. We have a seven unit here where we're looking to develop a small storage community or or, or facility um, on the south side of on um, Quintana Road. Uh, so that that's uh, some of what we're what we're doing right now and always looking to partner for, for other properties. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Can keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. Just do more of it. And like you said, uh, uncle Jesus 10 X, right? So uh, we, we were happy to uh, have him on our podcast earlier this year. And uh, he, he was the one, you know, I, I laid out this plan just kind of like you are doing. And I said, Hey, I'm partnered with multiple individuals. Uh, this is the best way that I, I could to leverage experience and keep doing co-sponsor opportunities, um, syndication, we're raising capital, this, you know, and laid out the whole thing. Right. And, and I said, what do you think? Is this the right path? I mean, should I continue on? Right. You've two, two billion dollars of, of portfolio. And he goes, I, man, I think you're ab you're absolutely doing everything you need to be doing. Uh, and I was expecting him to say 10 X the only time I've never heard of him. He goes, yeah, just now you, it sounds like uh, two to three X what you're doing. And, <laughs> and I go, I'm glad he didn't tell me 10 because I go, man, I've been hustling my, my tail off, but uh, he did not say 10. He said two to three. And, uh, but it's kind of funny, but you know, you're doing all the, all those things. He said, don't over leverage and keep buying more than, than, than you think you are and buy in good markets. He goes, and you're, you're partnering with people that have expertise. You just keep doing what you're doing. Go buy more, buy in the right markets. Don't over leverage. And, uh, you know, let's, let's keep going, getting it on. Right. I mean, based on the time and place, you know, during COVID we had an asset that actually fared pretty freaking well in a market that paired, fared pretty freaking well too. And now if we were in California or New York, we would have probably been licking our wounds right now, but we weren't, we weren't. We were in Texas and you guys did pretty well too on all your assets. Yeah. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, there was, there was some people leaving and some other people coming in, but you know, having, having class B and class C properties, you know, mainly for the workforce, they're always, they're always occupied in, in, you know, they have good jobs. They're, they're, they're willing to pay a little extra for something nicer than the other properties. Right. And we typically uh, strive to have, to make our properties better than, than the ones around them uh, and have, you know, have a clean, clean place, modern looking uh, property. So that way people want to live in our properties, not just are there because there's a, not a vacancy, but they want to live in our properties because they look better than, than, and feel better than the ones around them. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you're, you know, if you are an active investor and you're looking at properties, when you're looking at the average median income, a uh, good, a good way to look at it is just look at the average median income, divide it by three, divide it by 12. And that should give you an idea of what people are willing to pay or could pay for rents. And if the property you're buying has below market rents and you've got the ability to, you know, raise the capital and buy the deal and put some renovation into it. Now, you know that they can afford to pay it and probably be, be happy to pay for it to yep. live in a nicer spot. Uh, and, and you guys have found a way, a nice little niche over there in South Texas, you make a beautiful product with like, uh, some really nice, uh, what are they called? The vents above the oven, really nice, modern interiors yeah. at a good price. And I'm like, man, that's, that's what, that's what I want. I mean, I want to live in the nicest place possible and pay the least amount of rent. You guys have found a good little way to do that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're happy to, we've tested several things and then tweaking here and there, but we found a few things that, that definitely uh, are eye catchers and sellers. Like you said, the, you know, the stainless steel range hood or, or a nice light fixture um, artwork that we do in our, in the exterior of our property. So they, they, um, they catch your eye from the street, right? And we've been talking to other owners of, of properties down in McAllen. And we just tell them like, you know, it's in this location and they go, oh, the one with the artwork on it. Oh yeah, that's it. That's mm. ours. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know what it is. Right? I know where it is. So yeah, it, it's, it's a good identifier. <laughs> uh, nice. Nice, nice. Hello. Hello. You're listening to the five talents podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. If you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you're serious about achieving financial freedom. Are you ready to create your own path through multifamily investing for yourself and your family? Then I know you're going to appreciate our investor's guide to multifamily investing. It's titled Tackling Commercial Real Estate the Easy Way. We use this guide to invest ourselves in $93 million worth of real estate. So we're going to show you the basic mechanics of multifamily syndications and how to evaluate your next passive investment opportunity. So the best part, if you subscribe to our podcast now, leave us a review and a rating. I'm going to give you a free copy of our ebook. So please take a moment to do that now. Once you've done that, go to 5tcre.com forward slash ebook, 5tcre.com forward slash ebook. Make sure to let us know you left a review and we're going to send you a free copy. So thank you so much for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast. We really appreciate it. So, well, tell us, uh, you know, at, at this point, I think, you know, we have a, a good idea of um, the way you kind of got rolling and got started. And now it seems like you're all over the place. There's, there's a little bit of the mindset that you had to either build or you're still working through or still kind of, you know, continuing to build that mindset to keep going, number one, to start. And then number two, to keep going the way you did. So tell us a little bit about this mindset. Like how did, how did you, was it a paradigm shift? Or was it a continued work that you're doing? Is it, you know, what is it that enables you to say, you know what, uh, that's how I did it. And this is how I'm going to keep going. And, you know, any of this, these insights would help. Yeah. So again, I, I want to be, I want to be able to, when I have family, right, um, and children and, and, and yeah, family that will require my time, I want to be able to, and, and right now I have, you know, I have my parents and I have my brothers and, and it feels good to be able to go visit them and to be able to spend time with my family when, when, when I want, basically, right? I don't have to ask for a day off or things like that. So that's a great motivator to, to keep going and to... Uh, not want to be at a, at a W2 job. I also want to, you know, I'm 35 right now by age 45. I don't, I don't want to be operating. Uh, I want to be passive, passively investing in other people's deals, other people, you know, make it work good, good operators. And I just enjoy, you know, the, 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 what I did in the previous years, basically. Right. But yeah, but so that's why I'm, I'm busting my rear now so I can enjoy it. Uh, I'm enjoying it now, but enjoy it in a few years. Yeah. Fully. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, that's kind of the, where your, your drive is what it sounds like is 
you know, it is an operator side of it, finding the deals, finding the deals, financing. Then you got to put your plan together. Then you got to execute it, make sure it's continuous, keep up with your investors, investor relation, and then, you know, ongoing and choose the right exit. And that is an active grind. So there's nothing passive about that stuff. So be clear for the listeners. But if you do that, then that's where your big equity, the, your big, you know, the, the big ownership percentages kind of play up over time and you are in a position to invest passively on more deals. So that's kind of the mindset for you, huh? Yeah. Yes. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a be an active investor for the next few years and slowly be deploying the money towards passive investments and then slowly kind of step out. Yeah. For the, for the people that you've worked with, uh, well, let me say, let me rephrase this for the people that are listening that have not been able to take action. They've done some education. They've listened to podcasts. They've you know, gone to the seminars, but they've never done it either invested passively or try to put together a team to do it. What word of encouragements can you give them? I mean, it's, 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 it sounds, sounds like a no brainer, but it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's take action, just go do it. Don't be afraid. Uh, you know, if, if it's, if it's, some people are like, so stuck on, on, oh, you got to start with 150 unit. I mean, it, it's, it's a way, yeah, you can, right. If you get the right education and the right partners that, yeah. And you'll, you'll, you'll cut a lot of the curve. Uh, but also, I've seen a lot of people sitting on the sidelines for two years because they've been waiting for that 150 unit deal, right? Versus, hey, go start with a 32, go start with a 16, maybe you and, you and your brother, you and, you and your wife, like one or two more partners, buy it, get the experience. Uh, just don't be afraid of, of, I mean, don't be afraid of failing, but real estate is, at the same time, if you buy right in a, if, I mean, if you follow what you just said earlier, right? And everybody says it, right? Buy it in a good market, buy at the right price. Uh, even reg honestly, kind of reg almost regardless of the time of the, in the market, it's so forgiving. Like real estate is so forgiving that even if, if, if you, if a lot of things go wrong, you'll still break even when you sell. And the learning experience, it's unvaluable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you'll still break even, right? So, so go start with something, right? Whatever it is, whatever it makes you feel comfortable. If it's a single family, if it's a duplex, if you've done a few single families, go for the 10 unit. If you've done a couple of fourplexes, maybe now it's time to go to the 24 unit, but just start, start, right? And it's just that first step. Take that first step. Don't be overwhelmed by oh well it's because i don't know what i'm gonna do when i sell the property five years from now and how am i gonna then 31 that money out well don't you haven't even got the property on the contract so just don't don't worry about that you, you know you you can cross that bridge when you get there for now just just worry about submitting offers to get the property on the contract first and then you worry about the next step and in five years, you worry about the 1031. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. That's great advice. So there's there's a couple of things to kind of say again here before you, before our listeners, uh, before you check out, grab a pen and a piece of paper. You need to rewind the show because <laughs> there was a few things. Mindset, actively taking action, uh, a path to, to move forward uh, from somebody that was not born in this country, from immigrant to over here, you know, to the U.S., extra hurdles, extra challenges, believe me and believe him, he's, he's faced them. But, you know, you've got a lot of things in the show. Uh, the, these last ones that I heard, sitting on the sidelines versus getting in now, uh, there's this phrase, time in the market beats timing the market. And if you just move forward and whatever that is, whatever your next best investment opportunity, just go, just pull the trigger and yeah. make it happen. Just like Mauricio said, uh, I was I was blessed to to interview uh, the CEO of Benzinga, and if you're not uh, if you don't know who that is, he's uh, there. Go Google Benzinga and go check it out. They've got like millions and millions of people that come to them for the source of their trading information, like stock market stuff, right? 
and the advice that he was given, he goes, look, if you can't muscle up the, the mindset or the courage or ability to go invest 50 K into a multifamily property, he goes, just go start with the REIT, like put 500 bucks in and go get the stock. It's, it's real estate stock, but you're basically building up your muscle <laughs> to, to put in a 500 and put in a thousand, then do 10,000. If you can't do it there, you, you know, it's, it's going to be so hard to move. Like just, just try that something, try the 10 unit, try the one, like Mauricio said, and then try a five and a 10 and then do a 20, just keep going. And you know, if, if you have the ability to do it and you can finally take action, then put a 50 K, you know, number on the board and put it in a passive investment, do it three times. That's what, you know, me and my wife did my wife, um, myself once, twice, my wife, third time. And then we just kind of keep going. And anyways, such good insight, buddy. So thank awesome, you very awesome. much. Yeah, bro. absolutely, man. Happy to uh, share it. So we have a few more minutes. Tell us, please, who do you want to reach out to you? And then where should they go to connect to be in your world? Uh, anybody that has any questions about, you know, how to get involved in real estate, or if they're in certain stage in real estate and, you know, they're, they're looking to go to the next level and they're having, they're struggling, you know, I'll be happy to, to provide my feedback. Um, my kind of like my superpower within, within the, uh, within the multifamily world is uh, underwriting. So any questions about underwriting, I'll be happy to answer underwriting, i.e. analyzing deals to, to submit an offer. Uh, I'll be happy to, to provide feedback as well. Um, people can reach out to me. I'm on, on um, TikTok as the Medici Group. I'm on Instagram as uh, Mao RMS, M-A-U-R-M-S. Or uh, you can find me on Facebook also as Mauricio Ramos, and I mean, likely they'll they're seeing it here. So um, you can you can add me there. All right, Mauricio, thank you very much. Is there anything we didn't touch on today that you wanted to bring some additional exposure to, or highlight, or something you were hoping I asked and just never got to it? Anything in general? All good. All good. All right. Happy what a great here. show. Yeah, what a great show, man. I'm, I'm glad we got to record something finally. So it's, it's pre, I'm appreciative, I'm humbled, and uh, I'm happy to, uh, to, to be in your world as well, my friend. So again, my name is Abel Pacheco. I'm your host for the Five Talents Podcast. If you heard something that today that brought you some value, which I know you did, go to our podcast, hit the subscribe button, leave a written review, and share this with somebody else that could benefit from it. And go reach out to Mauricio. Let him know you heard him on our podcast and I would be blessed as well. So uh, thank you very much. And on the point of blessed, I guess the last part that I forgot to ask, dude, so you are Christian, you are a believer, you are all of those things. Uh, how has that helped your, I don't know, everything that you do, man? How has that's, that helped everything you do? That's the base. That's the base. That's the foundation of, of everything that I've done, man. Everything that, you know... I, I'm a I'm a true believer that God doesn't give me, He gives through me. So everything that I have is 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 just blessings that He's His giving through me and He's allowing me to help other people. It feels so good when I can help other people with the you know resources that He has given me. So yeah, praise the Lord, man. Always I always said it say it, uh, keep God first place. Uh you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised at the places that you'll you'll see. Uh, in the places that he will take you. Man, what a, I, what an amazing one. I just, you know, kind of came to me at the very end. I go, oh, I forgot this also. So uh, myself as well, believer, faith, uh, cr uh, Christian, and just, man, just knowing that Mauricio is that way, I, I've, I feel the exact same kind of mindset as all the good things that he's given me. There's so many opportunities that I didn't deserve, I shouldn't have had, and he just Absolutely. keeps blessing me with it, man. So just wanted to uh, to highlight that. It's, it's great to hear that about you as well. Absolutely, man. Yeah, praise the Lord. All right. Well, God bless you all listening. Again, my name is Abel Pacheco, and now we're out. Uh, thanks for joining. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you. Thanks, Abel. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Five Talents Podcast with your host, myself, Abel Pacheco. Each week, we're going to bring you interviews from industry experts and commercial real estate investors who follow their dreams and achieve massive success. Before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn something valuable? Was your mind stretched to what's possible and what you can achieve? 
Do you want other experts just like the one you heard today? If you answered yes to any or all of those questions, then please take a moment to subscribe to the Five Talents Podcast. Give us a five-star rating. And most importantly, leave us a written review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us your favorite guests. Give us any feedback. I'm excited to learn and improve so you can get a more valuable show. So thank you again for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast.